Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and I want to thank you for tuning in. This week is a Vallejo Rust FX semi paint tutorial. As always, if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of all future videos. All right, so I have this Matchbox Chevelle that one of my um, one of my friends sent me with a bunch of other Chevelles. And I figured it's a good opportunity. The the car isn't all that great to begin with. It's kind of a kind of a poor casting as far as matchboxes go, but it's in it's in overall decent shape, but perfect for this tutorial. And I had picked up these Vallejo paints, oh I don't know, maybe three weeks ago. Um, mainly for gasoline style cars. But I figured I'd just kind of screw around. I had a lot going on this week and the K7 matchbox that I was working on. Um, I just don't have the, the t I didn't have the time to finish it, so I figured I'd go with this. It's pretty simple once you take it apart. Um, plastic base, the wheels are being held in by, on the rear, the notches in the interior, and in the front, the actual notches on the casting itself. Um, posts are decent, plenty of thickness, easy to um, drill and tap. And I put it in my secret sauce of, you know, cit citrus strip with... You know residue from about 30 cars I just keep adding new um, pretty decent casting not a lot of problems with it so here's the rust and shipping effects package I was talking about I actually picked this one up at Hobby Lobby but I've seen them on Amazon and a bunch of other different places so um, I dump them all out to see what I got throw away the instructions because I'm a guy and I don't read instructions which I probably should have anyway so um, I'm not priming it I'm just gonna go straight to um, 71 129 light rust and I want to put that as my base um, I'm not mixing it with anything. I just put it right in the airbrush and It um, goes on really nice. Um, so I was surprised. I figured I'd have to mix it with something um, A couple light coats and then a tacky coat so my light The next one was the 71080 rust. So I'm kind of layering this a little bit and, and this is um, kind of it's more for a splotchy look so I'm gonna hit this is a little darker than the first one I laid down so I'm hitting the spots that would have I've owned like four Chevelles so uh, and being from New England I kind of know where the rust is and I had a 69 convertible at one point um, so convertibles they'll rust like along the rear deck lid the trunk um, the rear quarters every Chevelle rots um, rocker panels uh, the tops of the fenders front fender uh, behind the wheel um, then I'm gonna hit it with the 042 dark brown so it's kind of like a three layer process and again you can't see it all because I'm gonna end up painting this one you can definitely see as I lay it down it's you can see the darker areas and this is just more to give it depth now obviously I'm gonna paint the car now if I was gonna do um, just rust um, I, I would have used a different layering pattern so once it's done, just again, give it more depth. I'm going to use some yellow, 71033. And these are all out of the same package. If you guys bought the package, you can do this. You can screw it up just the way I am. <laughs> no, it looks, it came out pretty good. So I'm just using a um, sponge from one of the poly brushes. And I'm just going to kind of, again, add a little depth. I'm going over um, the areas, you know, front of the hood, you know, all the places that would uh, definitely have heavier rust than the rest um, with special attention to the rockers and the bottoms of each of all the fenders and quarters so by dabbing it I'm just again adding a little speckling and it's it's giving it uh, some depth even though I'm gonna paint the car um, now I'm gonna the last step is the 71 130 orange rust and again it's just to give it that extra layer the more the more layers you add um, for depth the better so instead of using the chipping agent I figured I'd try the salt I'm not that happy with it it came out pretty good and I like it um, don't get me wrong um, and originally I was going to do both the chipping agent and the salt um, I, I opted for just the salt just to see how it was going to work um, so I'm just dabbing some water in the areas that I know I want the heavier rust in the areas that I had spent more time with the dabbing and putting, you know, more layering on it. And I'm using this fine um, Market Basket salt. Uh, Market Basket's local chain 
uh, in our area. Any salt will do, but um, worked out pretty good. It didn't, the water just never dried. It was a pain in the neck, um, but it's wicked humid here, so I could be part of it. So I got my wicked colors white, and I get some like a yellowy brown color. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it with the white first. And I didn't go as I should have gone a little heavier on the on the second layer, and I'll explain in a second. So I lay the white down. I'm painting right over the salt. I'm painting right over everything. And then when I'm done that, I'm going to add a little of that brown in to tint the um, the white. And what that's going to do is I'm going to just hit the areas that I had the salt. So it, it just adds a little discoloring to the white paint itself. Uh, unfortunately, um, I had a hell of a time filming this just because it's white. Um, I hate doing white cars for video. It just it screws up your autofocus. It just never never looks good no matter how you do it. Um, and it looks like I'm putting it on wicked heavy and I'm not. Um, I'm just trying to... Remember, it's mixed with the white, so it's really not. It's just a tint. Um, and I'm only really focusing in on the areas, even though it looks like I'm flooding the car with paint. I'm not. Um, and uh, I had to put it on a little bit more than I wanted to just because it wasn't coming out. Um, a quick shout out. I did start a Patreon page against my better judgment. Um, Joey Williams, Christian Staniland, Jim Silva, Alvarez's Diecast Customs, Stephen Mance, and William Robinson. Uh, thank you very much. Um, those that have links will be down below. And I appreciate it very much. The paint dries then you go back over it with um, a stiff brush and what it'll do is it'll take the salt off revealing the multi-layered coloring of rust that I did below um, now I did one side a little heavier than the other um, the passenger side just because I wanted to see how it was going to look and then I'm taking some very light sandpaper I want to say it's uh, 600 and I'm just kind of scuffing and what that's going to do is that's kind of uh, getting the rest of the salt, the really, really fine pieces of salt off. And it's adding a little bit of, um, it, it's just blending the paint better. Then, <laughs> again, I'm going to take the 71080 rust. And I'm just going to dab just to highlight some of the certain areas. And, what I'm, and, the, and the whole point of doing this is rust... Um, has different stages and it's different layers you got old rust you got new rust you got you know uh you got rust for everyone and by doing this after i've painted i'm just trying to get a little bit more of a um it's just a very small detail by the time i'm said and done but it just gives like some fresh rust look as opposed to the stuff that's buried underneath the paint and shipped away and then i'm again i'm layering i'm using a 71 130 orange rust uh, just to do the final little dabs just to make sure that I'm getting some color varying color variates and variations because if you look at any rust there's always different different colors not just orange it's multi multi colors because it's in different stages of its rust life so and this is where I was going to stop because it was just a paint tutorial but I figured I'd screw it I'll go ahead and and finish the rest of the car so I'm just going to do the uh, the fine details like the um, the front marker lights um, because this is a 71 70 <clears throat> 70s have the dual headlights and the uh, marker lights are in the bumper and then I'm going to do the um, rear bumper lights the, the two red lights in the back just some stupid little details to, to help it pop a little bit once it's all together um, use my silver sharpie for my door handle and my deck lid lock which most of it, most of you if you ever owned an old car 90 percent of the time you've had to knock that out and you just have a hole you stick a screwdriver in to pop the trunk <laughs> um, i'm using i don't even remember the name of these pens but they're really really cool they got a fine tip um, and it works pretty good on the chrome if you matte clear the chrome bases and the bumpers and stuff like that it gives you a good good solid um base to be able to draw and color on with these sharpies as opposed to just a stock chrome that comes from the factory then once i get the windshield back in i decided to paint the um the visors because it looked really stupid with them clear i don't know anybody who has a clear visor so and i left the windshield dirty on purpose because <laughs> i just thought it looked cooler um but as always if you take 
any car I don't care what it is it could be the biggest piece of crap ever but if you put some cool chrome rims on it it'll look better and it goes faster because chrome makes you go faster anyway so um, I had some wheels kicking around um, they were the right dimensions I didn't have to do any work and they just sit in there and they're pressed in anyways so um, I did that and I think it came out pretty good it's a good good for my first attempt with the Vallejo stuff um, I'm real happy with it I'm definitely gonna use it again on my upcoming gasoline projects um, and I might just do a whole car that way and I just think it'll look pretty cool so but I was happy to be able to use it right out of the air um, right out of the bottle right into the airbrush that was my biggest biggest concern and my you know the, the reason behind this it's what I started with and this is what I came up with as always I hope you like what you see and I'll catch you on the next one